Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. An aluminum job came in the shop today. I pulled off what I was doing to make these seven little parts here. It's a fancy little pry bar. And this is a fixture to line it all up. That's the cool thing about uh, working for machinists is a lot of times they will whip you out a little quick fixture that help things go a lot smoother. And this is just a simple fixture with a little uh, you know, uh, trough radius in there. And the parts go together kind of like this. There's this one inch flat bar with some drilled and tapped holes and there. Uh, it's got to go a certain way because the holes aren't, uh, aren't, aren't matched. And then there's this little wedge piece that's got some drilled and tapped holes that goes flat side up like this according to the drawing. This is all done per drawing. I'll show you that in a minute briefly. And then uh, there's a handle, a one inch handle that's going to fit in that trough. And that's why we put the trough in this little aluminum block so we can get everything clamped and lined up so it would be, it'd be straight while we fit it up and tacked it and weld it. Now the challenge here, the biggest challenge in this little job is that you got, I've got this little small wedge piece here with a 120 thousandths inch lip. So I've got to get enough heat, enough amps to melt that one inch without blowing away that 120 thousandths lip. Still make it look decent. And uh, that's what we're going to try to do today. And then also got to weld this side here, which is going to take quite a bit of heat. So a little quick glimpse of the drawing. You see the weld symbol calls for a 120 thousandths inch fillet on those two pieces. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to line up a piece here with the square, just a squ of an extra spare part of this thing. I, I could have used anything, but I just used that for a straight edge and I clamped it down. I'm going to use a little tri-square there to clock and index that thing. And then I'm going to heat this up, the, the, the uh, thick part, to about 250 so I don't have to use so much amperage when I'm welding that thing to that small lip. So let's see, that piece is hot. I'm going to get it lined up flush with the edge there, having that stop already in there, and then using these little one-hand clamps that are, are part of this strong hand tool fixturing package. And then the one-inch the uh, one inch round stock will fit it back here, and I'll swing this little other clamp around with a v-pad on it perfect for round parts like that and I'll lock it down with one hand and it's a good thing that they, you can use them with one hand because a lot of times I'm, I'm working by myself and one hand is all I got because I'm holding something with the other and lastly I put in the little wedge pie piece here and again I, I've, I've uh, preset that little square and so all I have to do is get it to where it's uh, flat with that and that's clocked in and I'm using this little homemade third hand tool to temporarily hold that in place because there's just hardly any uh, mating surface there and all I need is just something to kind of keep it from moving while I tack it. And I've got copper wire on it and a copper filler wire ball on the end to make sure I pick up a good ground and don't pit whatever I'm welding on by uh, transferring a, a, a ground, a hard ground through the third hand. So that's all lined up, ready to get a couple of tacks on now. And what I want to do is tack a couple of tacks about 180 degrees apart before I weld that little small piece. And I'll weld it first because it's going to take less heat and then it's going to preheat the bar. And then I'm going to go ahead and weld the other side with the one inch round stock to the, to the flat bar and uh, after it's heated up a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and get the first tack on here in just a second. I'm using a Dynasty 200DX with a WP20 water-cooled torch, 332nd, 2% lanthanated electrode. You see that puddle pretty quickly. That's because I preheated it. But the arc still wants to run over to the thinner member. And so I'm just going to take my time, get the two pieces joined, and then just soak it a little bit, let, let it blend in a little bit. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You see the heat wants to run over to the small piece, but I'm just going to add a few dips of rod. And before I get crazy with the amperage, uh, get them joined together so that they conduct and then again soak the heat in just a little bit and let it heat up a little bit and blend in before I attempt to weld it. Now because I'm welding thick to thin here I'm focusing the arc on the thick piece and just letting that puddle kind of run over to the edge of that 120 thousandths inch thick lip there and that's not doing a real good job of it either because you see me bump the camera there and shaking a little bit and everything but you know it's it's uh the point is so you don't always want to aim that electrode at the center of the joint. Sometimes you have to offset it a little bit when you've got a thinner member because the heat's always going to run or want to run to the thin piece. 
and I just sharpen the electrodes and let them ball however they would. Not quite as sharp. I got a little flat spot on them after I sharpen them. And here are the settings on the, uh, the Dynasty 200. Uh, about 65% on the AC balance. 65 to 70 anyway. I kind of played with that a little bit. 100 up to 150 on the AC frequency. I didn't find that made it as much difference as I thought it would. Main difference was where I aimed that electrode. Here's another angle. I turned it up flat and tried to see if that would go any better. And again, I'm just kind of offsetting the arc just a little bit and letting that puddle run up and just nip that edge off that 120 thousandths inch thick piece. And uh, not doing as well as I had hoped on this job. Uh, I should have cleaned it better. I should have actually degreased it more. I should have soaked it in acetone instead of just wiped it down because a lot of those holes and everything were holding cutting fluid and a lot of that was weeping out onto the parts. And uh, anyway, live and learn. They looked a lot better after they were uh, had their black finish treatment and their anodized treatment on there. You can see they have the little, uh, little insert with set screws on the one piece and the little nylon insert. Again, I'm assuming this is a, just a, a non-marring type of a pry bar that's uh, made to assemble or disassemble some precision component. And there you can see one of the welds after it's uh, finished treatment on there. So all in all, it didn't turn out too bad. I just wish I'd have cleaned it better. And, you know, like I said, I've been at this a while and I'm still screwing up every day, but that's what it's all about. We try to get better every day and, you know, not perfect, just, uh, just get better. All right, well, thanks for watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.